Hello everyone and welcome to Pine Feather Friends History Redo. My name is Jay Bird and today's episode is The Bitter Life of President Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was the seventh president of the United States and a two-star general. He was the first president elected to not have ties to either the founding fathers or was a member of the Virginia dynasty. Jackson used his popularity as an Indian fighter and a war hero to get elected to two terms from 1828 through 1836. Using a populist platform, Jackson built his base around the common folk, using broad terms when speaking about politics, and using his status as a celebrity to work up his people like a certain former president. Just like this individual, Jackson was a very wealthy man, but unlike this person, he made his money through actual work and didn't have a rich father to help him waste money. Jackson was born in a log cabin on March 15, 1767, the son of two Scotch-Irish immigrants in the backwoods of the Waxhaws. Angie's father died a few weeks before he was born in a logging accident. At the age of 13, in 1780, with his mother's blessing, joined a local militia along with his older brothers Robert and Hugh to fight the British. A year later, Andrew and Robert were captured by the Redcoats while on patrol. Due to their young ages, the brothers were sent to live with a local family that also hosted British soldiers. One day, a British officer, Major Coffin, living with the host's family, ordered Andrew to polish his boots. When he refused to do so, the Major slashed him across the face with his sword. Robert suffered the same fate as well when he didn't polish his boots either. The Jackson brothers were sent to a POW camp soon after, where they both contracted smallpox. Their mother was able to get them released due to their ages, but Robert died two days after he arrived home. Andrew's mother nursed him back to health. After he recovered, she worked as a volunteer nurse on a prison ship and would die during a cholera outbreak. He was an orphan before he was 15. His brutal early life would set the stage for how Andrew Jackson would grow up into a cruel slave owner and a bitter individual who hated the British and things he considered British, like the aristocracy, old wealth, and political privilege. He grew wealthy by making money off the local Cherokee and Chickasaw tribes by stealing their lands through treaties and selling them to wealthy landowners. Through these land dealings, commerce, and greasing the palms of local authorities, Jackson soon became a major player in Tennessee. He used his money to build the hermitage. At one point, it was a 1,000-acre slave plantation, which made Jackson a very wealthy man. This was where Jackson built a reputation as a cruel slave master who encouraged beatings if it increased production. In 1806, Jackson killed local lawyer and duelist Charles Dickinson in a bizarre duel over a remark that he made about Andrew's wife Rachel and a horse bed. You can add vindictive, cold-blooded, and violent as well in describing Andrew Jackson after this. The duel would leave him with a bullet close to his heart for the rest of his life. The War of 1812 gave Andrew Jackson the biggest opportunity to inflict his rage on his two rivals, Native Americans and the British. Andrew Jackson, along with a coalition of the Cherokee, Creek, and Choctaw tribes, waged a war against the Red Sticks, Jackson will later repay the tribes by removing them from their own land. Jackson will organize a volunteer army that would march towards Spanish Florida and fight an alliance of the British, Spanish, Creeks, and free slaves at the Battle of Pensacola in the Gulf Theater portion of the War of 1812. The Battle of New Orleans in 1814 would solidify his war hero status as his soldiers slaughtered the occupying British forces. The battle was fought more than two weeks after the War of 1812 was officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Ghent. For the next several years, Andrew Jackson continued to command the soldiers in the South. In 1818, he personally led soldiers into Spanish Florida to punish them for harboring slaves and renegade natives. This led to the first of several conflicts known as the Seminole Wars and the eventual occupation of Florida. Jackson would later be appointed military governor of the newly occupied Florida, but would later resign to focus on a run for the White House. Due to his high-strung, boorish, and violent disposition, Andrew Jackson made a lot of enemies amongst the government elite. Henry Clay and John Quincy Adams, whom he felt cheated him out of the presidency during the 1824 
general election due to Congress having to decide the election under the 12th Amendment because no candidate had 131 electoral votes to win outright. John C. Calhoun, his own vice president, who later resigned over the nullification crisis and the petticoat affair, which was started by his wife-slash-first cousin, Floride. After resigning as vice president, he was appointed senator of South Carolina and became a pain in the ass for Jackson throughout his second term in office. And William Crawford, secretary of treasury under President Monroe, who knew of Jackson Stiffy for the Bank of the USA. Andrew's wife, Rachel, who was the subject of a duel years ago, died before he was sworn into office. In his second year in office, Jackson signed the 1830 Indian Removal Act, which cleared out the southeast of all the native tribes, sending them to Indian Territory, which is now the state of Oklahoma. A year later, the petticoat affair ended. Jackson's entire executive cabinet had to be replaced with mass resignations and New personal appointees. The nullification crisis reared its ugly head during the end of his first term with fallout from the tariff of 1828 and bitterness from the petticoat affair. This would end with a force bill which Jackson sent the Navy to South Carolina to enforce the new tariff of 1833, forcing John C. Calhoun to compromise when he threatened originally to nullify any federal order. After being elected for a second term, which began after the 1832 election, Andrew Jackson was the first president to be physically attacked. His assailant was Robert Randolph, but Jackson refused to press charges. Two years later, he became the first president to nearly be assassinated. His would-be assassin was an Englishman, Richard Lawrence, a crazy, unemployed house painter who claimed to be the King of England. When Lawrence's guns misfired, Jackson pummeled him with his cane until the two were pulled apart. Jackson finally got his wish to destroy the Second Bank of the United States during his second term when he signed the removal notice which removed deposits from the bank, causing it to immediately fail. Unfortunately, his tinkering with the banks, the major collapse of the Second Bank of the United States with no backup plan, too much growth in the West due to Indian Removal Act, major bank runs, a decline in cotton prices, and the bubble bursting of land prices caused the Panic of 1837, which would lead to a deflation in salaries and a high inflation for goods and services. The economy would not pick up again until the gold rush. Jackson openly hated the anti-slavery movement and abolitionists in general during the last years of his second term in office to placate his southern slaveholder base. He ordered southern postmasters to detain anti-slavery tracts. During his last day in office, someone asked him if he had any regrets while president. He replied, I wish I hanged Henry Clay and shot John Calhoun for treason. After leaving the Oval Office, Jackson retired to the Hermitage, but he continued to be a Democratic Party power player and gave advice to Presidents James Polk and Martin Van Buren. Andrew Jackson's bitterness did not dissipate with age. Before his passing, he called the two young stars of the Democratic Party, William King and James Buchanan, Miss Nancy and Aunt Fancy. Andrew Jackson died on June 8, 1845 at the age of 78 from tuberculosis, dropsy, and heart failure. Before he died, his last words were allegedly, Oh, do not cry. Be good children, and we will meet in heaven. He was survived by his adopted son, Andrew Jackson Jr. Andrew Jackson was buried in a tomb with his wife Rachel at the Hermitage. Andrew Jackson's sad childhood, complex personality, bitterness, and bile filled his rise to the top off the sweat and blood of slaves, Native Americans, and dead British soldiers. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Fine Feathered Friends History Redo. My name is Jay Bird, and I'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye.